Hi friends and welcome to today's video. Today I want to share with you my top learnings that I took away from just very recently last week running a retreat in Sri Lanka. In case you ever want to run your own retreat, maybe, then I've got a few things to pass on to you. Maybe they will help. Now my retreat was a surf yoga business mastermind retreat for digital nomads and creative entrepreneurs. I had a retreat partner, was a really good friend of mine, my friend Corey. She has been running yoga and surf retreats for a couple of years and several times in this exact location in Sri Lanka. And she asked me maybe a year ago or so, hey, Connie, do you wanna, you know, run a retreat together? Cause I've got everything set up, got all the infrastructure. You just gotta, you know, do a shout out and then bring your people. So it took me a while, thought about it on and off. I was like, oh, should I do a retreat? But then eventually, I think it was in March this year, she asked again. And then I said, hell yeah, let's do it. Cause I'm in hell yeah or hell no kind of girl. There's nothing in between. I sold out the retreat in 24 hours. That was pretty crazy, actually. Uh, we ended up having 12 amazing, beautiful women coming to Sri Lanka and joining me and Corey in six days of, you know, morning meditations and yoga, surf sessions, workshops, one-on-one -on -one coachings. We had amazing vegan food. We did a new moon ritual and lots of other amazing things that really made this week just so magical. And I'm so grateful for the experience because wow, it just blew our minds. Like all of us, mine and Corey's, but also all the women were just above and beyond at the end of the week. And it was quite sad to leave each other because yeah, we created, created a lot of beautiful connections with each other. Now, the main reason why I wanted to run a retreat was I had sort of retreated into myself for a very long time. Um, I used to do a lot of workshops and I've also run a retreat here in Bali before with a business partner back then. And, you know, I, uh, because I was going through a bit of a really hard time last year and beginning of this year, I, yeah, I was kind of in my shell. I was hiding a bit from being too close to my followers maybe. And a lot of people kept asking me, when do you run workshops or retreats or how can I meet you? How can I learn from you? And so I was like, well, maybe, maybe I should give people the opportunity to hang out with me for an entire week. And I also felt like I wanted to have more direct contact with people that have been following me for a while. and. I spoke at a big conference for digital nomads in May at the DNX and, and it was a really beautiful experience to connect with people in real life because as much as I love, love, love making videos and being on Instagram and you know putting out content online and showing myself there, obviously meeting people in real life, obviously it's a very different and unique experience. And that relates to my very first learning from running this retreat is that, wow, there is so much power in bringing people together in real life and just the magic of connecting with a group of women was just amazing the energies that we shared with each other just the the vulnerabilities that we embraced with each other throughout that week and just to see the process of when you know 12 are actually including me and Corey 14 people come together as you know no one really knew each other and by the end of the week we had grown so close and it was just an amazing magical experience now the second thing is and i was very lucky with that one because corey had been running these retreats of hers in this location in this amazing beautiful villa actually it's two villas and there's two pools and it's right by the ocean right by the water there's an amazing beautiful huge palm tree garden and I mean it was just beyond it was so spectacular um, and just and not just the setting but also the energies the vibe right there it was just oh, it was just so heart opening and 
I, I realized from having done different events in the past just how important location is and, and everybody was really happy with their rooms and the whole setup and you just walked in and you were just like, oh my god, this is paradise and it really was and it allowed these beautiful energies to actually be created and to then have this amazing time together. Number three is that if you do it with a retreat partner, then choose wisely. And again, I was so lucky to do it with my friend Corey. We're just such a good team together. Everything was super easy and in the flow. There was never any negotiations or conflict situation, which is really crazy because, you know, there's so many decisions that you need to be made um, to organize a retreat like that and then to run it together. But it was so smooth and I would totally do it again with her in a heartbeat um, because I also realized that it's so much more fun to do something like that together with somebody and to complement your skills and your experience and, and your knowledge. And so Corey was doing the yoga and meditation sessions in the mornings and I was doing the business mastermind workshops and the one-on-one -on -one coachings. And so in that way, we were just, you know, just the perfect team really. Thanks, Corey. Number four is that it is a real challenge to fit in everything you want to do <laughs> with your group during that week into the time frame that you have. I mean, I would have loved to do double the things in the workshops and the sharing circles and so much stuff and ideas that I had, but you know, as you might think that a week is a long time, but it actually isn't. And I know also from past experience just how important it is for people to have free time, to decompress, to actually enjoy where they are, to integrate, even more important, to spend time with each other and to connect. Now number five is that I really, really rediscovered my joy and passion for giving workshops, doing leading mastermind groups, and just for passing on my experiences and my knowledge and helping people with what they want to create. And I also really love doing the one-on-one -on -one sessions. However, I also know that I'm not generally a one-on-one -on -one kind of person. That's a reason a lot of people always ask me, do you, I do life coaching sessions or business coaching sessions? And I used to do in the past more so, but not anymore because I realized I'm more of a one-to-many kind of person. So as much as I totally loved spending one-on-one -on -one time with every single participant um, from our group, um, I definitely more enjoy it more doing the workshops and I feel like maybe going forward with any other retreat I'm gonna do I might either have less participants because doing 12 coachings in six days or actually it was there was scheduled over four days so sometimes I had four one-on-one -on -one coachings a day plus about two or three hours of workshops so there were a couple of days I was just completely exhausted and dead and so yeah I'm gonna have to think about a way to better organize that so either less people for the retreat maybe only 10 or even 8 um, or offer the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as an extra that they can kind of book extra beforehand or during the retreats and in that way I wouldn't offer it to, to everybody coming to the re retreat but only those that really needed that one-on-one -on -one attention however from talking to my group I also know how much they valued those one-on-one -on -one sessions because you know when there's so many people around it's very difficult to spend one-on-one -on -one time together so I think for them it was just really awesome to be able to have an hour with me uninterrupted focus on them and so yeah I'm a little bit undecided as to how to move forward with that in um, another retreat. Number six is that I guess maybe especially when there is a bigger group of women coming together and also considering that your vibe attracts your tribe there were a lot of emotions coming up during that week um, you know people take time off their busy lives and you know suddenly they're decompressing and finding more space and so there can be a lot of stuff coming up, up a lot of triggers um, everybody brings in you know their stories and um, the things that they deal with and sometimes people go through some hard stuff and see so it's really about also being able to hold the space 
for whatever does come up for individual people in the group and being able to handle that. Um, but yeah, I mean, in our group, to be honest, we were such a cool team all together, all the 14 of us. The next thing is just how important self-care is during the retreat, but also especially after the retreat. I found the time while I was there with the group to be very energizing. Even though I did all these one-on-ones and the workshops and you know there were evenings when I, when I was very tired, yes. But it was still very energizing because just because we had such a beautiful energy among us. I didn't notice until actually I came back here to Bali just how exhausting it was for my system. And you know, I did get a lot of sleep in usually every night. I did make it my thing to go to sleep early because we had to get up at about six or so for a morning meditation. And yet, you know, it is it is exhausting, it is tiring because obviously you're constantly focusing on, on other people, you're giving a lot from yourself, from your energies, you're holding space for a lot of people. Um, and so it's really important during that time of the retreat, as much as you want to give all the time um, and spend a lot of time with your participants to also be aware that you do need a few hours to yourself to kind of decompress and ground yourself. And of course, with um, this retreat, we had meditation, yoga in the morning, so that in itself was very grounding also for me. And we had healthy food, we went surfing, so, um, but yeah, when I came home, I needed to schedule a few days to just, and just really spend time on my own, not talk to people. Um, yeah, it really took me about three days, roughly, to recharge my batteries and maybe an entire week even to properly come back to kind of that balance in life. And lastly, I guess something that I keep learning and learning and I keep embracing and embracing is that you just gotta trust the universe <laughs> with what happens, you know? Yeah, I just really trusted that the people that were gonna show up and whatever was gonna happen was just meant to be. And in that way, I do have a very strong connection to the universe and just to, you know, knowing that everything, there's a purpose to everything and that no matter how it would go, I would always learn from it and it would still be a beautiful experience. And I never had any doubt that it would be shitty. I completely, fully surrendered to the idea that what I was doing and organizing with Corey was gonna be wonderful. So those were my learnings from running a yoga surf and business mastermind retreat in Sri Lanka. And I'm curious, have you been on a retreat? What, what was good, what was not so good? Are you thinking about running a retreat? Um, I'd love your input and experience with retreats in the comment section below and other than that if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for more awesome videos and i'll see you in the next one love from bali Mwah.